When your safety system requires more functionality than a safety relay, but is not so complex that you require a safety PLC, a small safety controller from the PNAS Multi-2 family provides a flexible and adaptable solution that can grow to fit all of your safety project requirements. With controllers just 22.5 and up to 45 millimeters narrow, they are a perfect fit for both small and large projects and can fit into the smallest control cabinet. To help you better understand how this solution can be used in your project, we will discuss the different controllers and the basics of wiring a device. First, let's review the controller options in the PNAS Multi-2 family. The smallest of the controllers is the PNAS MC0. With eight safe digital inputs and four safe digital outputs, it can take the place of up to four traditional safety relays using only the space of one relay in your cabinet. It's a perfect entry point. If your project requires more inputs or outputs, the next step up is the PNAS MB0.1. With 20 inputs and four outputs, it can handle up to 10 dual channel safety input devices. It can also be expanded with one extra I.O. card and some of our many communication card options. The next upgrade in the family is the PNAS MB0, which is the best selling PNAS Multi-2 controller. It can do all the same things that the MB0.1 can do, but can be expanded with up to six extra I.O. cards, allowing over 270 inputs on one controller. This controller also supports our analog and our motion monitoring cards, allowing the controller to handle complex applications like safe speed monitoring, speed comparison, and so on. The most powerful controller in the family is the PNAS MB1. While it does not have onboard I.O., it does come with Modbus TCP communication and a USB memory card, making it easier to transfer your projects to the controller. It can be expanded up to 12 I.O. expansion cards and can also be used with our FSOE EtherCAT safety card and our key and pocket RFID system. The first step in wiring your PNAS Multi-2 controller is the power supply. The units all have two separate power supply connections. First, terminals A1, which is 24 volt, and A2, 0 volt, power the controller itself and the communication bus. The 24 volt and 0 volt terminals power the outputs of the controller. These can be powered using a single power supply or isolated by using two, depending on your application requirements. The next step is wiring the inputs from your device. The PNAS Multi-2 controllers have two different input types. They are labeled IM or I. The I inputs are safety inputs that can be used for your devices like light curtains or an e-stop. The IM inputs are configurable inputs that can be used for safety devices or if needed, they can be configured as a non-safety output, for example, turning on an LED on a tower light. In our example, we will wire a simple emergency stop to the PNAS Multi-2. To help monitor faults that can occur on the input, as an example, a short to 24 volt, a short to ground, or a short between the input channels, we can also use the test pulse outputs. There are four test outputs on the controller labeled T0, T1, T2, and T3. The test output is a 24 volt signal that is pulsed to zero volt at a set interval. The inputs being used will be configured to receive a specific test pulse signal. On the configurator, we will add the e-stop function and select the detection of shorts box to allow us to use the test pulses. In the start tab, we will select the manual start and select the input to be used for the reset. Once this is done, we can wire the three inputs on the controller, sending T0 through the first contact and back in at I4. and T1 through the second contact on the e-stop and back to I5. Since we did not use a test pulse for the reset, we can take 24 volts and pass it through the reset button and connect it to I6. Once this is complete, we can now set up an output for your controller. On the PNAS Multi-2, there are four transistor outputs rated to two amps each.
If your application requires it, PILS also offers expansion cards with relay contacts. A feedback loop to provide higher diagnostic coverage of your system can be configured at this time as well. Once the outputs are wired and the project is downloaded, the controller is ready to safely stop your machine.